Hey, what's good everyone? Welcome to My Street Diaries, Local Iceman here. And today's gonna be part two of theories and principles on how to change the blade. So what I'm gonna do is back the Zamboni on the ice, show you a few things. I also wanna keep it the same thing that the ice is gonna tell you how to cut it. I had a great comment from Mr. Green on my last video that he tells his guys basically if it's big kids, I'd be them paraphrasing here a little bit, that with big kids you wanna take off more snow and with the little kids you wanna take off less snow. I totally agree with that and also wanna to add to that, even if after the little kids skate, if there's still ruts from the, the skate before, let's say the big kids skate before and there's still deep ruts in the ice, you may wanna take a little bit extra off, even though the group on the ice may not cut the ice too much. But that's basically a good general rule of thumb. The more powder on the ice, the more cut up the ice is, the more beat up it is the deep ruts and stuff that the hockey players leave, the big deep grooves that the hockey players leave, you're gonna have to take up more snow and as well as lay a little more water. And to take up more snow, obviously, you'd be a little more blade. And that's where you're gonna be a little more cautious when there's tons of powder on the ice. It's really easy to fill up really quick. So you have to kind of gauge uh, the blade and, and that's where experience comes in and you could watch all the videos you want, but it's the really experience, the hands-on experience, that's where it comes in. The more cuts you do, the more comfortable you are with the machine. And one thing too I wanna to talk about is the feel of the machine. And I think Mr. Green also alluded to this too, that the machine, after you drive it for a while, you'll start getting the feel of it. And, uh, and not so much the feel, but the sound of the machine, how the blade's cutting, how much snow's being taken in a tank. I mean, you don't have to look inside the tank or look down on those, uh, the spots I indicated earlier to see how much snow's going in, if you really hear it. And you could go over a spot, you could tell like if there's a little high spot in the ice, the machine starts bearing down and cutting more. If you really listen to the machine, it's gonna tell you kind of what's going on, you know. Like mechanically too, if the bearings get loud, you know it's time for a bearing change or squeal from the engine or if something doesn't sound right, the sound of the machine really is a good indication of what's going on. And as you're driving up and down the ice, doing your cuts and as the snow's coming in, just listen for the snow and listen for the nice consistent hum that's coming through there. And, and you can tell from the powder how it looks, not how it feels, but how it looks as it goes into the tank. If it's really super fine, that's really good. But if it's really wet and soggy, you know that your ice is probably too warm and it's gonna be a tough cut. So let's go ahead and hop the machine. I'm gonna show you what I talked about last week as far as dragging the blade on the ice and setting the blade and find out exactly where the blade's supposed to be by looking back at the shave marks on the ice, the, the grooves it leaves on the ice. So let's warm this baby up and get out there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back up here to the center of the ice because the center of the ice is supposed to be the flattest. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag my blade with no water and I'm gonna look at the scrape marks on the ice. And what I want is, a, is to see the scrape marks, the full width of the conditioner. If there's any gaps or so, anything, you know your blade's not set far enough. So I'm gonna point the camera backwards, but if I can't get a good uh, view of it because of contrast, um, I'm gonna get off the ice and we'll go over what, uh, what I'm talking about. All right, let's hop off the machine here. You can see where I dropped my conditioner just on the other side of the blue line. As I came across, I started lowering my blade down. I hope you can see the contrast here. Now I get back to the red line is where I, I felt like I had my blade set pretty well. There's a few little spots I think I can see right there, but at this point right here, I got it set pretty good. This is a good indication of checking how, if your blade's scraping well. So as you're coming through, you start adjusting your blade. And you do this before you turn the water on. Because you, once you put the water on, it's gonna kind of cover all this up. So as you come through your pass, you start your pass, drop your conditioner around the center of your ice. And as long as you hit the boards, or you back up along the boards, doesn't matter where you start. But just drop your conditioner first, you know, give it a churn on the blade just a little bit, start seeing it dig. And once it starts uh, carving the ice really good, I mean, your auger should be on at this point. And uh, then turn your water on once you have your blade set. So as a new driver, this, this is what I would do. Drop your conditioner in the center of the ice. Uh, kind of give yourself some space. Start dragging your conditioner. Get your augers going and look behind you. Don't turn the water on yet because the water is going to cover it all up. And just start turning that blade wheel down and start watching the, the blade scrapes in the ice. And when they start, I mean, if you're digging right away, you know you're good, you know. But if you're not digging, if your blade's not set down enough, that's what it's gonna look like. It's gonna look like uh, there's patches that you've missed. So just give that blade wheel a little turn, you know, well, half a turn, full turn, whatever it takes to get it so it's looking like a full scrape across the width of the conditioner, and you're good to go. And if you give your space before you start your run, uh, then you got your water and your board brush, and you're, and you're good to go. And you know what? And this is really for when you first get out of the machine. Uh, if you don't know what the last guy did, you, 
then you have a good indication where you're at. So as you come off the ice, you should know where the blade's kind of at. So next time you drop it down, again, you just start churning it until the blade starts digging on the ice. And some other pro tips, as you come in through the crease here, our crease has a high spot and a concrete right behind it. So you're always doing your churns right here. So as you do your churns and come through, you don't want to shave the crease down. So it's a good idea to raise your blade up a churn and back down as you go in through the crease and up the middle. As well as, you know, we start, most of the time we start our passes along the board here because that gets us going out the ice straight on our glass pass. But I alternate and I start my runs against the boards this way. So when I go up the middle, I'm going up the middle going this way versus the other way. So when I end, actually, I'm ending, uh, my last pass is kind of coming up to this side, but then coming out these doors this way right here. So by alternating your, your pattern and your start patterns, you alternate your overlap points. So we, our problem area is over the player benches, about a pass or two out from the player benches, the home side to be honest. So as you overlap that area, you kind of want to raise your blade just a tad so you're not shaving that area down. And since our area has a problem area with the concrete rising up, we gotta be especially careful not to keep double cutting that spot. So I switch up where I start my patterns. Hey, you can even start your pattern going up the middle then go along the boards all the way around. That, that's a complicated pattern that I'll show you guys at some point, but it's pretty cool. And one thing I'll mention too, and this is, gets a little bit complicated and it depends on how low your ice is. But one thing with setting the blade, you know, once I go my two passes around the outside, and you can go one, two, or three passes around the outside before you go up the middle. As I come up through the middle, I get my blade going. But as I'm coming into the corners, I guess what I'm saying, if you've got some high corners and you've got some uh, high spots to your corner, as you're coming up this way, as you're floating towards a corner this way, you can add a little bit more blade to shave the corner down a little bit more. Conversely, as you're coming out of the corner, I mean, you can have more blade, but as you're floating towards the crease, you want to have less and less blade. You're kind of tapering the corners as you're going into them and you're kind of tapering off the corners as you come out of the corner. And it's a little bit complicated. It's the kind of same principle I use when I'm laying water. And it really applies more for the, when you lay water, I think, in my opinion. But doing the blade, um, if everything's level, everything's consistent, you don't have to worry about it so much. But the same thing on this side, as you're coming into the corners, as you're floating into the corners, you want to have more and more blade. And as you're coming out of the corners, you want to have a little bit less and less blade. I would say just as far as the circles go and the corners. And most of my flooding too happens in the middle of the ice. I don't really flood, do any extra floods in the corners, unless it's all beat up and roughed up. But essentially, you can do a little more blade in the corners, a little bit less as you're coming through the crease and, and between the hash marks, and a little bit more as you're coming into the corners again. I'm going to preface that too. Again, that's if you're not ice is level. If your ice is level and everything's going good, you got level concrete, uh, your blade should be pretty consistent throughout the whole sheet of ice. Only the overlap points over the creases as well as your start area. You want to basically only your creases and your start point, your overlap points, you want to be cautious of. All right, well, there she is, not too bad. And one last thing I should suggest to you guys, the, the new drivers, so to say, and I think the experienced drivers, anyone who's experienced hopefully would agree with this. But the best way to gain confidence in your Zamboni driving and your blade adjustment is practice, 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 practice. Now my education is something else besides Zamboni training. So I've um, done a lot of work in exercise science and sports psychology. And one of the big things in that field is, is confidence. How do you boost confidence? And basically the number one way to boost confidence is through practice. The more you practice, the more confident you're gonna be. You, know, you can be mentally tough, you can have you know, relaxation skills, you can have any kind of concentration skills, you can have it all. It won't prepare you mentally more than practice and it's actually doing it. So the more practice you get, the more ice kits you do, the better you become and you'll, you'll pick up on things. And like I said, the ice is gonna tell you how to cut it and read the ice. Well, read the ice when you get off too. Look at the where you've uh, just did and you can tell certain areas I can tell as I'm coming out of the corners, if I don't turn my water on in time, it's really dry right there. And there may be areas in front of the net that are all ruddy still, and, and there could be nothing you could do about that. But if you kind of reflect back on it, say, ah, oh, maybe I didn't have enough blade. I have, you know, only a half a tank after a hockey game, after a men's league game. You know, maybe I didn't take enough ice up. 
So learn how to read the ice afterwards and look at the spots you did and and kind of reflect and look at, oh, okay, I could have laid more water there, I laid less water there. Uh, we always can squeegee water out on this side of the rink, but the other side down there, all the referees will let us know definitely if you dump too much water down there. So read the ice, see how long it's taking to freeze. I just got off maybe three minutes ago, four minutes tops. And the ice is freezing pretty good. And it's still, um, it's mid-afternoon right now, so by 11 o'clock tonight, it's not gonna freeze as fast. So, but you know if you laid too much water, if it's not freezing fast enough, given the ice conditions and the, the user conditions and stuff. If you've had a huge public skate, of course, it's not gonna freeze quick. Well, I hope you found that helpful, and please leave comments below if I missed something or if you have a different perspective. The more people who share their stories and the more people who share how they do things, the better everyone else is gonna become. Especially the new people coming here to search information, because I know when I was first driving, there wasn't a whole lot out there, so hopefully after, <laughs> these videos you either know what to do or what not to do so that's my that's my goal is either to show you what not to do or hopefully most of the time what to do and I want to say too like learning from your mistakes and it sucks making mistakes and you want to avoid from making mistakes but making mistakes sometimes you know you gotta make a mistake to know better if you don't make any mistakes hey ha uh, hats off to you man you're you're doing really well and like I tell most new people who are driving the machine Hey, if you're better than me the first time, I worry about my job, so. But yeah, please leave some comments below and I hope to share your information and share your, your thoughts and opinions about uh, the videos I'm doing. And if you guys have any suggestions for different content or a particular question you have that I could try to answer for you, go ahead and shoot that down. And like doing these videos, you know, you don't really get my opinion and my views on ice maintenance and Zamboni stuff. You get everyone's views and everyone's opinions who make comments and stuff so please leave comments that way it could be a, a great resource for people to come to and a great sounding board you know like i've only been to a few training training classes and stuff but it's really nice to know when you go to places and you're kind of hearing that you're basically doing the same thing that everyone else is doing and the most part you may do things a little bit differently but it's really nice that to have confirmation that you know you're not an idiot that you know sometimes i don't think i know what i'm doing but after going to some training classes and going online and looking at things, you kind of realize that, like, yeah, I got a pretty good idea of what's going on. A lot of it's effort, just making the effort to do things, the ice maintenance done and stuff. Knowledge is one thing, but effort and actually doing it, that's something else. That's the harder thing, I believe, is actually doing it. All right, well, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you learned something. And like the local ice man says, stay cool.